We're going to talk about phase noise today. And so let me show you a picture of it first, and then we'll talk about phase noise. I'm going to be using this uh, oscillator here. Um, and I have a data sheet for it that, that tells me exactly what the published uh, phase noise is on it. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at it on a uh, spectrum analyzer. So this is the carrier, and then this uh, skirt, this kind of uh, lumped up piece of, of energy that, that, that kind of hugs the carrier. This is the phase noise, and this is because the, the um, uh, signal wobbles a little bit, and there's a little bit of energy uh, near the carrier, all right? And um, you can imagine that there's a peak, and then there's some place on this skirt that you can measure um, to take a look at how much energy might be down here. Now that little lump over there is fictitious. It's a it's a a, a birdie from the uh, from the keyside. It's a spur, so ignore that. We'll we'll just look on the left hand side here, and so I have set up here uh, delta markers, and so I have one marker at the peak, and I have one marker down here, and we can read that right up at the top here. So I'm a hundred hertz to the left, hundred hertz offset. And I'm getting about, oh, let's call it 91 dB. It's bouncing around, but we'll call, I have averaging on and everything, but it's about 91 dB right there. 91, what does that mean? Well, it's 91 dB difference between the two, okay? It's a delta measurement. And instead of dBms or dBs, whatever, this is called dBc, dB carrier. It says how many dB below the carrier, that one, are you? So we measure that one, we measure that one, we take the difference, and we, ha we know that we're 91 dB below the carrier, okay? So that's, that's the number that we need to go away from this. All right, it's also a function of the bandwidth of the spectrum analyzer that you're using, okay? And so uh, it's very important that you pay attention to what your bandwidth setting is and what your span setting is. Now, since I'm interested in 100 hertz uh, away from the carrier, I have the span set at 1 kilohertz, okay? So this is 100 kilohertz, 100 hertz, 200, 300, 400, 500. And um, so we're going to be measuring there. The other thing we need to worry about is the bandwidth. The bandwidth tells us how much energy is captured over a certain bandwidth. And our bandwidth right now is set to 10 hertz, okay? And we could read that right down here too. It says center at 10 megahertz, our bandwidth is 10 hertz. Now we have to remember that 10 hertz because that's going to uh, enter into our calculation, okay? So what we need to know is 91 dB and 100 hertz off and we have a 10 hertz resolution bandwidth. Okay, so let's look at some paper first, okay? The first thing we're going to look at is the data sheet of the oscillator. Um, this is an, uh, an OSC5A2B02, and it has very good phase noise specifications. So here's the phase noise down here, and uh, it gives it the phase noise at 1 hertz, 10 hertz, 100 hertz, a kilohertz, and 10 kilohertz. Now, that, remember, that's away from, away from the carrier. We just measured the 100 hertz one, okay? And so this is the, uh, this is the number that we're trying to, to measure. And this says it's minus 140 dB, they forgot the D, 140 dBc, dB carrier, per hertz, okay? And that per hertz is the thing that we need to worry about right now, the per hertz, okay? All right, so let's get out a piece of paper here. All right, so we have uh, 91 dBc at 100 hertz. By, by standards, you always measure the upper band, upper uh, side, the, the right-hand side of the waveform. You measure the upper side band. Um, but because I had a spur in my signal, I went ahead and measured the left-hand one. But by, by, de by definition, you should measure the right-hand one. But they're about the same. They're about the same. doesn't really matter. Okay. So we measure this at a bandwidth of 10 hertz. Okay. Now, so what does that mean? Okay. So imagine that you have this, uh, you have this carrier, and you're going to be measuring how much power is in... Uh, 
a particular bandwidth, and we know we have 10 hertz, so this is 10 hertz. So we measured how much power is in 10, but what we want is how much power is in 1 hertz, okay? So we have to convert our 10 hertz number into a 1 hertz number, okay? We need to do that. We need to do another thing, which is, if you imagine you have this, I'm going to zoom in, here's this curve, and we're measuring the power in this one hertz window or this 10 hertz window that we have, the 10 hertz window. Um, that assumes that your averaging function looks like this. This is called a box car. But we don't have that. We actually have a Gaussian filter that looks, that looks something like this, okay? So our filter, even though it's a uh, 3 dB point is 10 hertz, it's missing a whole bunch of energy that a boxcar filter would see. And we have to take it into, into account for that. So what's the difference between this and this, okay? We have to know that difference. W what is this missing section? And you need to talk to the manufacturer of the, of the device you have and ask them, okay? It's not published really anywhere. There's good rules of thumb and we're just going to use the rule of thumb today. We're going to say that you're missing about 20% of the power, okay? About 20% of the power is missing from this Gaussian curve. So we need to multiply our number by 1.2 in order to compensate for that, all right? So we need to compensate, again, for this 10 hertz. And we're going to do that by doing the 10 times the log of the bandwidth times the uh, correction factor, the spatial factor, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to put in 1.2 here. Okay, so what do we have? We have 10 times the log of 10, 10 hertz was our bandwidth, times 1.2, okay? So we have 10 times the log of 12, okay? Um, and so if we take the log of 12 with our calculator, uh, calculator, um, all right, 12 uh, log is 1.0, we'll call it 1.08, okay? It's the log, and 10 times that is 10.8, okay? So we have, we have some, we have 10.8 that we have to take into account, okay? All right, so let's go back to our original number. Our original number was 91, all right? 91 dBc, all right? And it's actually a negative number. The way that you do the math, it ends up being a negative number. So it's actually nine, nine, minus 91 dBc. And then we're gonna subtract off the extra 10.8, okay? When you subtract things with logarithmic numbers, that's the same as dividing them. And so we're actually dividing this number it's kind of a funny thing. We had 10 and we needed to divide that down. So we're, we're dividing it by about 10, right? But we have that extra factor in there of 1.2. So we're actually subtracting a 10.8. So we actually have, uh, let's see here. Can I do the math? Uh, we have 101.8, right? Did I do that right? I'm not thinking well this morning, 101. 9, 10, yeah, 101.8. So this is the number that we just measured. This is dBc per hertz, okay? So we just measured phase noise. We measured 101.8, and we were expecting 140. So we didn't get there. Uh, we didn't even get close to there. So a few things is going on. Um, uh, uh, we might not have enough bandwidth I mean, not enough bandwidth, that's the wrong word. We don't have enough dynamic range of our instrument. And um, if you think about spectrum analyzers, they, the input goes into a spectrum analyzer and the very first thing it enters is a, is a mixer. And it gets mixed with a local oscillator and then it goes out. Well, what if your local oscillator in your spectrum analyzer has phase noise. Well, that phase noise will be there in your measurement. So instead of measuring the phase noise of the thing you're measuring, you're measuring the phase noise of the actual spectrum analyzer itself, okay? 
And because our device should be 140, and we're only measuring 101, we're probably detecting uh, the phase noise of the instrument. Uh, big glare on it there. Probably detecting the phase noise of the instrument. So let's go ahead and measure it with a different instrument and see if we get a different number. Okay, I'm using a different instrument. I'm setting it up exactly the same. I have a uh, uh, one kilohertz span. We're at 10, we're at 10 megahertz. Um, we have a delta marker set at uh, uh, 100 hertz to the left, and we're measuring 86. Okay, 86. So, what did we measure down here? We measured 91. Okay, so this is uh, this one was key sight and signet siglent. Measures minus 86, almost 87. We'll call it, we'll give it a benefit now. We'll call it 87. Okay. So we can see that it's even worse. Um, we have three, four dB difference between these two. So it's about four dB. The, the key site has about a four dB lower noise floor or phase noise <laughs> measurement. Uh, capability that uh, Siglent. So the Keysight's a little bit better. Now the Keysight instrument is just a field instrument. It's not a benchtop instrument. So you can probably get a much, much better uh, benchtop instrument that will give you even a lower noise than this. Um, but um, it probably still won't get you there. And so it's very difficult to measure the phase noise uh, because, like I said, because on a uh, spectrum analyzer you come in and you go into a mixer and then there's an IF in the, uh, in the uh, spectrum analyzer that has, that has phase noise, okay? And so how do you get rid of this? Well, here's a kind of a hand wave. Let's say you have a spectrum analyzer and you, you double the circuitry. So now you have, you, you bring the input in and you split it and you want, run one through this one and you run one through this one. But these are totally separate um, oscillators. They can be the exact same frequency, but they're different oscillators, which means their phase noise is gonna be a little bit different. They're not gonna be coherent. They're not gonna be in, uh, exactly the same. And then you bring this into a circuit that is a correlation circuit, okay? Now, there will be no correlation between these two because they're completely separate. Because, but because these two came in split, there will be maximum correlation on this signal because they're exactly the same. So you use this correlation uh, circuit to subtract out any phase noise from your IFs. And you can get super, super, super low uh, measurements of phase noise by using architectures like this. And so, guess what? There are machines that are dedicated to measuring phase noise. <laughs> okay, that's all they do in life is they measure phase noise. And um, there's a nice, um, I'll put some links down below if you want to read up on this. Uh, this is the key site uh, noise. It's called the Signal Source Analyzer, Advanced Phase Noise and Transient Measurements. So just a couple things. Uh, this is the E5052B. Anyway, they have a um, they have an app an app note that goes through all of the. Uh, let's see if they have a drawing of the thing that I just drew. Uh, yeah, it's sort of here. Um, so you bring in the signal and you split it. And then part of it goes this way and part of it goes this way. This one has a local oscillator, this one has a local oscillator, and then you run them through some, uh, a correlation function, which is uh, you do FFTs on both and then you do correlation on both. And that's the way you can subtract out any phase noise that be associated with your local IFs. There's other fancy ways to do it too that, uh, again, this is kind of the diagram that I just showed. Um, there are other fancy ways to do it. They go through a bunch of math and diagrams and everything. So if you're interested in phase noise, yeah, uh, go for it. Um, what I've just discovered though is, unfortunately, you're quite limited to benchtop spectrum analyzer measurements. This is kind of the old way to do it. Um, I found an old 
this is an old, uh, go, let's make, go back down again. This is a really old app note that Hewlett Packard did probably back in the 1970s. And um, it, it, it also uh, shows you how to measure it with an old analog spectrum analyzer, not even a digital one. But it talks about the differences between a boxcar filter and a, uh, and a Gaussian filter. It talks about how you, what math you use to get rid of that. Um, and then it gives you a little, uh, little cheat sheet here. You put in your measurements, you measure your stuff, you have to multiply that by 1.2 like I just did, blah, 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 blah. They also have some additional correction factors, which is there might be some random signal correction that you need to take care of. And they, they say, they kind of hand wave it and say it's two and a half. <laughs> they must have measured it on their system. And then there's also maybe a little extra fudge factor for uh, non-linearity of the log amps and stuff that you put in here for your carrier level and stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, if you're interested in phase noise, you could go down a big rabbit hole. Um, but uh, today we measured phase noise uh, with two different instruments, and I think you can see the problem you can get into.